Good evening and welcome to the Smut Nut Reviews. Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, if you're joining me for the first time, welcome to my channel and thanks for tuning in. Um, for those who are returning, um, I'll do what I always do. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an update on me, what I'm working on, and then we'll get right into this week's review. Um, so, a little bit of an update, a really weird kind of situation going on. Uh, for those of you who know me, I work, I have a regular, it's not a 9 to 5, I work a 10 hour shift and I work really, really late at night. Um, so I have a regular day or evening job. <laughs> um, but I have a really weird situation going on, which is that I don't have a job anymore. And it's not the worst thing ever because if I don't, um, it actually is kind of really satisfying because I've been very, very, very unhappy in my current work situation for a really long time. Well, not a really long time, but long enough. Um, just really unhappy with what I do um, and wanting to just focus my time on writing. So, if that is something that is actually happening, and that's why I said it's weird because I don't know, I'm kind of in limbo right now. Um, but if it is happening, I think I'm kind of relieved. Um, I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of days just working on my book, character developments, things of that nature. Um, I did tell you guys I was going to give you an update on the pen name situation. Um, so I did decide on a pen name and it actually became a combination of the two that I chose. Instead of choosing one over the other, I combined them. So I will be writing um, from this, fourth, this, this period going forth. Um, under the pen name Tinsley Taylor. I really like that name. I think it has a nice pop. Um, and that's what I've decided. I actually haven't shared that with anyone else. So everyone tuning in, this is the first opportunity that anyone has to hear that. Um, so I'm announcing it here. But I basically made the decision myself, within myself, um, probably maybe a week or two ago. But I'm announcing it for the first time here on my channel. I will be writing under the pen name going forward, Tinsley Taylor. So when you start seeing that name pop up everywhere, remember it's me. <laughs> um, in terms of my book and the writing that I'm doing, um, I've been doing a lot of character development and just kind of storyboarding um, what's happening in the book. Like I said, I have the entire series here. It's now getting it out on paper. Um, so I've been doing a lot of storyboarding, a lot of character development, just getting a feel for who my characters are and letting them speak to me. Um, so I've got an entire list down to the smallest background players up to, you know, the secondary characters and who they are, the parts they'll play, where they come in in the book. I'm trying to get all of that, you know, taken care of. And this is just something that helps me better with my writing process. Um, the weird thing is I was clearing out, um, no, my mother, <laughs> who is a huge supporter of my, mine, was clearing out her email and she found... Did she find? No, I found um, a very early copy of the book, um, of the first chapter of the book. And it definitely needs some work, <laughs> but I was really happy to have found it because at least it gives me a little bit of inspiration um, going forward. So that is where I stand with my writing, with my life, things that are, you know, going up and down. Um, but I'm actually really in a good place, really happy. Um, and I thank you guys who continue to tune in, who continue to watch and re review and rate, comment, like, and subscribe. So thank you all. Um, so I'll jump right into our review for this week. Um, so again, we are continuing the review of the Doms of Genesis series. Uh, this is book three. So this is week three that we're reviewing this. Um, we're on to the third book in the series. And that would be Master of My Mind. Um, so again, this is a series by Jenna Jacob. Um, love this series. Love everything about these books. I know that previously I've said that I don't actually have a favorite in these series. Uh, or in this series, there's, you know, I love them all. But I kind of lie. <laughs> if I had a favorite, it would probably be this book. Um, so we'll just jump right into it. Um, again, look at the book, look at the cover, very sexual, very sensual, um, very, 
eye-catching from the jump. So, I definitely love the design of these books, of the covers of these books. It's always something that pops right out at you. Um, so, that is something that Jenna's great at. <laughs> Second, um, again, this is book three in the series. Um, book two we discussed last week. It was about Savannah, Dylan, and Nick. Um, we did get a little glimpse of Emerald and Micah. And now moving forward, we now have uh, Lee and Tony. So I love this book so much because this book was one of those one of those gut wrenching series. One of those gut wrenching books. It literally pulled on every human emotion there was. It was so dear and deep. <laughs> to my heart. Um, Lee is, again, Lee and, um, and Tony are both members of Club Genesis, which is a, a high-end BDSM club owned by Micah, who is now with Emerald. Uh, we have many characters who have, you know, shown um, cameos in each book, um, but the characters that we're focusing on this book, in this series, are in this in this particular uh, portion of the book, or the series, I'm sorry. I don't know where my words are tonight. Bear with me <laughs> while I get my footing. Um, we're focusing on Lee and Tony. So Lee is, I guess what you would call the resident club brat. Everybody who knows anything about uh, dominance and submission, you know there are definitely um, degrees. You can be a very serious dominant, very serious submissive, and you can also have people who kind of dabble and are, you know, into the lighter side. So Lee is actually into the lighter side of it. She's what some would call the club brat. Um, she joined the club with her dominant at the time named George. George was an older gentleman. He took Lee under his wing. He protected her. He loved her in his own way. And he kept her. And they had a great physical relationship. Very, you know, um, not completely, you know, demanding of Lee. He was never very demanding of her submission. He was very, you know, he just wasn't very stringent. Um, but it worked for Lee, and their relationship works for her. But the reason why I say it worked is because at the very beginning of the book, uh, there's a tragedy. George dies. George, as I said, he's an older gentleman, and he has a heart attack, and he passes away. And it's heartbreaking for Lee because he was her protector in so many ways that fall outside of the BDSM community. He literally took her in and gave her a home and gave her security and gave her um, a life because she's had a whole lot of kind of like tragedies that popped up in her life. And George helped her and he protected her and he watched out for her. And they had a relationship that wasn't the norm for most BDSM relationships, but again, within lifestyle, you can cultivate your own, what works for you, and they did. Um, George was much older than her. Lee is in her 20s, and George was much, much older than that. <laughs> so, their relationship was definitely a little, you know, mm, but no one in this particular community, in this circle of people, judges. They let them do what works for them. So at the beginning, um, Lee is devastated. Her whole world is kind of crumbling. And you feel that devastation. You feel that pain. She is heartbroken. And she's scared. And she's very much, she feels like she's very much alone. Although the entire club rallies around her. All of them um, rally around her to, you know show their support, show their love, and let her know you're not in this alone. You weren't the only one who loved George. We all loved him, and we're going to take care of you as his submissive, as his partner. We're going to make sure you're looked after. Um, we're not going to let you fall by the wayside just because George is no longer here, which, again, is something I love about this particular series and this particular community of people. Um, what Lee doesn't know is that there's one particular member of this community who is really not going to let anything terrible happen to her. And in comes Tony Del Vecchio. 
Uh, Tony is the resident sadist. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, Tony likes to inflict pain. Um, he is very skilled and very, very adept at it. Um, and he doesn't have his own submissive. He is a dominant um, and he's a member of the club, but he doesn't have a submissive that he has collared. Um, so he basically walks around and he, you know, mingles with the uncollared submissives, specifically the uh, masochists. Um, anyone who's looking for a little bit of pain, they know that the person who can inflict it the best and with the most care is Tony. But Tony is secretly harboring this like huge, I'm just going to call it a crush. <laughs> even though it's so much more than that, I'm leaving. And he's always had it on her. He thinks that she's definitely uh, very flippant and she needs somebody to take a whip to her tail. But other than that, he's completely enamored with her. But he's always respected the lines of her dominant. George was his friend and his uh, they were colleagues. And so he's not going to disrespect that in any way. Um, the other thing that Tony is, is also the resident therapist. He is in his daily everyday profession he is a therapist um and so it's a little weird not even weird um some people find it weird because you have this man who thrives and he is definitely in his element when he's inflicting pain on someone but at the same time he's a therapist so it's almost like maybe you should <laughs> seek your own therapist or what most people in the outside world would say maybe you should you know psychoanalyze yourself but he's very comfortable with who he is. And he helps a lot of our dominants and our submissives um, previously and later on come to the realization of who they are and accept who they are. Um, Tony decides to take Lee under his arm, under his wing. Um, she's very headstrong. And she says, I don't need anyone. I don't need you guys. I appreciate you all being here for me, but I got to figure this out for myself. Uh, the only problem is that George has a lot of previous baggage. An ex-wife, a daughter. They both hate Lee. Um, and so because George is dead, it really becomes kind of a sticky situation where Lee literally has no home to go to. She has no rights to any of George's things and any of George's possessions because... They were his, not hers. Um, so, you know, she finds herself really alone and on her own. Her and George's ex-wife and his daughter are really a nasty piece of work. And they've taken all of Lee's possessions, all of her clothes, everything, and they've destroyed them. So she has nothing. And it's heartbreaking to watch this woman who has endured a tragedy still be faced with all of these uh, insurmountable insurmountable problems that continue to arise um, but Tony is there for her and he takes her home with him um, and he cares for her and she is confused because she's dealing with the grief of losing her master she's dealing with being angry at him because if you n knew that this is how your wife and your daughter felt about me why didn't you take care of me? Why didn't you make provisions if this were ever to happen? Um, you prepared if something were to happen when we were making love. And the weird thing is that George did die while they were making love. Um, you made sure that there were precautions for that. But you didn't prepare for me when it was all said and done. You didn't make sure I was looked after. So she's angry. And she doesn't want to stay with Tony. Even though he's basically opened his home to her. And opened his soul to her and let her know you're not alone and I will definitely take care of you and she doesn't understand because in her head he's always hated her but that's not the case and he opens his heart and says I've never hated you if you've mistaken my desire for you as hate then I'm sorry I didn't I don't you know I didn't know how to really push that off or play that off because you had a master so it's not like I can take you away from him I respected him and I respected your relationship. But I've always wanted you. And in her head, she's like, it doesn't even matter. Because we're completely incompatible. What you do, I am not prepared to do. I don't want a sadist. And I'm definitely not a masochist. So I don't see how this would work. And Tony says, 
nothing is predetermined. You can be whatever you need it to be. George didn't make you be anything you weren't prepared to be. I would never do that with you either. Um, and so he's trying to show her that they can work. And she's trying to traverse everything and holding on to a shit ton of secrets. Um, that George wasn't just her master and protector in the club. He was protecting her from her past and from previous hurts and pains. So it's a lot that she's got going on. Um, and Tony takes it upon himself to remove those burdens from her. Um, and show her that she can open up to him and trust him with her secrets, trust him to protect her, and trust him not to push her further than she wants to go in the bounds of their relationship. And he shows her a different aspect of uh, a BDSM relationship where, you know, you can give over control. Because the fact of the matter is with her relationship with George, she retained all of the control. So he shows her you can give over your control and still feel safe and secure and know that somebody loves you. So I really enjoyed that about this book. Um, it was a myriad of human emotion. There's anger, there's grief, there's fear, there's love, there's lust, of course. There is the uncontrollable urge to protect. There is so much in this book. And they go through such a long journey. And that is what I also liked about this book. It wasn't, you know, a short, quick, to the point book. This was in depth. This book is, oof, how many pages? This book is definitely, you know, pretty thick. 412 pages. Um, that's not, you know, a short read by any sense, any, any, any form. Um, Jenna really dug deep with this particular uh, installment of the series and figured out a way to get to the heart of what a dominant and a submissive relationship is all about and it's about trust it's about you know opening yourself up to the possibility of trusting this person with everything that you are um, and everything that you are you would want to be um, and I loved watching Tony and Lee's relationship blossom and because it goes from her absolutely wanting nothing to do with him to him taking her to places uh, mentally, physically, uh, spiritually that she's never been before and trusting him to guide her through it all. Um, I adore this book. There is, like, I've read this book so many times. <laughs> um... It's very, it's very real. One of my favorite scenes in the book is um, the submissives, they get together. Uh, so we have Emerald, we have Savannah, um, we have Trevor. You guys, I haven't talked very much about Trevor. Trevor is another submissive in the book. Um, he's basically been in every book thus far. And I haven't gotten to him because his book also comes up later on down the line. Great story. But uh, they take Lee out to kind of try and, you know take her mind off of everything that's happened because what she ends up doing is she tells Tony that she can't stay with him and she has no place to go so Micah opens up the club and the club has not only you know the main room where every you know where everything takes place where the main dungeon but it also has private rooms that certain people pay um, if they frequent the club enough to have um, and George was one of those people he had a private room so since Lee doesn't have access to his home and she feels like she can't stay at Tony's home, she stays at the club in George's room. And it's a little hard for her because that room is, of course, filled with nothing but memories of her and George and their relationship. So it's hard for her to get over him and, greet, and you know, get past her grief. But her friends come and they decide to take her out. Um, only it turns into a little bit of a, a crying jag because... She really does miss George. And she realizes how alone she is. And it, one of my favorite parts is that these other people who care for her, Savannah and Trevor and Emerald, they gather around her and they, they lend her their strength. So she, while she cries and she is very emotional, which, you know, everybody expects, they lend her their strength. 
Um, so that's one of those things that I love about this series um, and about this particular book. It really shows you how close-knit a community, the BDSM community is supposed to be. Um, I really wish, like sometimes when I'm reading these books, I'm like, I wish Genesis was a real place. I would kill to go there. To meet these people, to meet these characters. But, you know, I understand they're not real. Um, but I love that. I love this book and this series so much. Um, I won't tell you everything. Because, of course, there, you know, I want to give you just enough to say I'm really interested in that story. Um, but this is probably, like I said, my favorite book. If not top two in the entire series. Um... Tony and Lee have a very hard road that they traverse, but when they finally get to the end, when they finally have their happily ever after, and everything does eventually fall into place for them, it's so satisfying to see these two people who have gone through so much to be together. He has basically helped her break down every wall that she put up around her mind, around her heart. And he's broken through it all so that he can love her. I That was so satisfying. It was amazing. Um, in terms of the writing, always excellent. I mean, Jenna can literally, in my head, she can do no wrong. Um, she has a way with a turn of phrase that draws you in and paints such a vivid picture. And in terms of the heat index and the sex, I mean, this entire book is based around characters that are in... A, some sort of BDSM relationship and so there's always going to be sex involved Tony and Lee <coughs> I love them because one of the most intimate parts and intimate scenes in the book absolutely has nothing to do with sex Tony spanks her and he pushes her to a place and I'm not going to go into it but it's a, it's a specific place that a submissive goes to and she's never actually had the opportunity to let herself go enough to experience that. It's very, it's very beautiful and it's very touching that that's the point where you start to realize that she's trusting him and she's loving him and she's letting some of those walls down. So I am always going to give these books a 10 out of 10 when it comes to heat. They have amazing sex, of course. There's always amazing sex in these books, but it's, like I said, it's never just for the sake of having sex. It's intimate. It pushes the story forward. It draws you in. I could talk for hours about this series, particularly about this book and these two characters and how much I love them. Um, but I'm going to end it here. I hope that if, you know, if I've touched on anything or if you guys have any questions please leave them underneath the video i will of course be leaving the link to this wonderful book in the description again it's master of my mind jenna jacobs book three in the doms of genesis again if you're looking for something that is just so decadent so delicious and so rife with human emotion please pick this book up i could not say it anymore um other than that, I'm gone for the night, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys have a great one. And I will keep you up to date. If I am going to not be having a job, um, <laughs> I may, you know, try to increase my frequency with which I do these videos. Right now, it's just once a week, generally every Thursday. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted. In the meantime, have a great night.